Good evening, everyone. So today I'll be discussing pre-exposure prophylaxis. We all know how to take a pre-exposure prophylaxis, but we should also know that there is a difference between if you or me take a pre-exposure prophylaxis. If someone is a veterinary doctor, he takes a pre-exposure prophylaxis. So someone in a research lab takes a pre-exposure prophylaxis. The goal is different. You and me are anticipating a known exposure. We want to protect ourselves if in future we get a bite. Whereas someone who's working closely with the animal, someone who's working in the research lab, is always handling the virus. He wants to protect himself from unknown exposure. So the method how you do it is also different. So that's exactly what we are going to discuss today. So coming to pre-exposure prophylaxis, as I already said, that when we look at pre-exposure prophylaxis, you know the schedule, whether it is intramuscular schedule or intradermal schedule. It is single dose on 0, 7, as well as day 28. WHO recommends only 0, 7, and WHO recommends two doses. But here in India, we are following a single dose on 0, 7, and the third dose anytime between 21 to 28, it can be given. You need to understand that anyone who has taken three doses of anti-rabies vaccine previously is considered as immunized with anti-rabies vaccine, irrespective of the interval. Now, most a common indication that uh, we should be taking is especially if you are an animal lover, if you have pets at home, if you have kids at home or constantly interacting with these animals, it's always better to take an anti-rabies vaccine. People tend to say that I have vaccinated my pet, so why should I take a pre-exposure prophylaxis? Remember, for your pet to be considered as humanized and protected, the criteria includes that the current age should be more than one year. The first dose of the vaccine should be given at more than three months of age. He should have received two doses six months apart and should also be on yearly vaccination booster and vaccine should be of good quality. So all this is difficult to ensure. So that is why it's always safer to have your pets vaccinated as well as we take a pre-exposure prophylaxis. That would be definitely good if you have a high risk there, if you have a high risk. And nowadays, most of us seem to be in the high risk environment. So as I already said, the goal of pre-exposure prophylaxis for people like you and me with standard risk is definitely boostable immunity because you are looking at a known exposure, anticipating a known exposure, whereas people who work in the laboratory, veterinary doctors, you are looking for an anti-rabies protection for an unknown exposure. That means you don't know that you have been exposed to the virus, but you need to have a protection at that time. So the goals are different. So now, what do you mean by boostable immunity? Remember, whatever schedule you take for your pre-exposure prophylaxis, once you take the initial doses, after three doses, you're going to have a very good antibody response. But this antibody response, after six months to one year, it is going to come down. And for many, it may persist above the protective level, even up to 10 years, but for many, it may also come down. But once it is below the protective level and you get an exposure, you are definitely vulnerable to the bite then what is the use of taking a pre-exposure prophylaxis? The moment you give a vaccine to a person who has already received three previous doses of rabies vaccine, you will find an immediate jump in antibody type within a few days itself. So that is the importance of taking a pre-exposure prophylaxis. In case of any future re-exposures, you don't require rabies immunoglobulin. You don't want anyone to poke the uh, injury site that, have, that you have sustained. All you need is two doses of vaccine on day zero and day three. Now, why is it that you are telling that three doses of vaccine at any time is considered as a person immunized with rabies? Remember, when you give one vaccine, you have a small amount of antibody producing effector cells and small colony of memory cells. When you give the second dose, you have larger number of memory cells and larger number of plasma cells. These plasma cells are the one that are going to die off, but these memory cells are going to persist. If you have taken three doses, you have enough reserve of memory cell to respond to a future vaccine with a very good antibody response. So when you have enough memory cells, they would be normally moving around like this, doing nothing, not producing any antibody. But the moment you get a repeat vaccine, immediately the 
uh, memory cell will recognize the vaccine, converts itself into a plasma cell and start producing a lot of antibodies. So there is no delay. That's exactly the reason why you want to give a, a pre-exposure prophylaxis. So as I said earlier also, there is on re-exposure, only two doses needed and no need for rabies immunoglobulin. But first three months, you don't require to give any further vaccine. So that means if you have taken a pre-exposure prophylaxis, next three months, if you have a re-exposure, you don't require to take any vaccine. So now, how long does the pre-exposure prophylaxis protect? Many people ask. Routine boosters are not recommended for standard risk patients. Usually the protection is considered as lifelong. So lifelong you have, at least for 10 years, you definitely have any re-exposure, take just zero and three. And what about people who have an unknown threat, people who work in a research lab, who are on constant threat, you do not know when you are going to have an exposure. For such a person, what we normally recommend is check antibody level, usually at six monthly. At six months, you will see, and if the level is less than 0.5, the government of India recommends to give a booster. But most other uh, world bodies recommend to give a booster when the level comes below one itself. So what is recommended, check six monthly for the first two years. Once you have adequate protect protective level, then you need to monitor only two yearly. Remember, when you're taking a booster, it is a single dose. Whether it is IM or ID, boosters are always only single dose. You never give the whole schedule. And what is ideal? What um, this is the schedule that in UK they follow. What they will do for a very high risk patient, they definitely require periodic boosters. So they say that estimate the antibody level after the last dose of the vaccine or after one year after the last booster. And when you check for the antibody level, depending on the level of the antibody, you can decide the frequency at which you need to take boosters because there is a 27 percent reduction per two-fold change in time since the last vaccination or booster. So depending on that protocol, they have decided that if your present titer is 10 IU per ml, you don't require to give boosters for the next 10 years. If it is 3 IU, you need to take boosters five years later. Five years later, you can test again and then give booster. If it is more than 2 IU, then no booster is required, test again or give booster three years later. If it is only one IU, then test again or give booster one year later. So almost whatever is your uh, level, almost that many years later, you need to take a booster. But if it is less than one IU, immediately give booster vaccination and then retest one year later and decide how to follow up with the vaccination. So that was regarding pre-exposure prophylaxis. Thank you.